What's uh, going on? I like that blue wall. Um, Good, Stephen A. The Eagles mm -hmm. have picked a receiver in the first round for the last mm -hmm. two years. Why do you have them picking one again, Mel? Well, Devontae turned out to be really good, and Jalen Hurts now has to be really good. And they get the guy like Chris Olave, a true professional in every sense of the word. Love Chris Olave's attitude, his approach, uh, the way he tested, the way he played at Ohio State was outstanding. And now you had Devontae Smith and Chris Olave to give Jalen Hurts an opportunity to have some success. Remember, he didn't finish strong, and he regressed a little bit. So now all of a sudden, you got to get him up to where the level you need to be to win big games and be consistent in the NFL. And then you add a defensive player who could be a centerpiece of your defense in the coach. Kobe Dean, uh, you got something going there. Daxton Hill, the defensive back from Michigan, could be in the mix as well. Love the kid. But I think if you get an Olave and you get a Nicobe Dean, you got great attitude, great approach, great football IQ on both sides of the ball coming in. I think that would be two, I guess, say, prof the consummate professionals is the way I would describe Chris Olave and Nicobe Dean. Mel Kiper Jr., always a pleasure to see you, my brother. I'm not going to belabor the Jalen Hurts point simply because of this. I think the Philadelphia Eagles had enough weapons for him to look better than a guy that completed 61% of his passes through 16 touchdowns, just nine interceptions. I think he's incredibly athletic. He's a high-end competitor. I believe in him. I've got confidence in him, but he still has some more to prove, and I think it's about him more so than the weapons around him right now. That's just my personal opinion. I want to get to Derek Carr because I got Mel Kuyper Jr. here. Mel Kuyper Jr., I got a problem. I got a problem with this contract. I have no problem with the years, even if you get. Hello, everyone. This is Al Kabeda, analyst. And today I will be talking Mel Kuyper, mock draft for the Philadelphia Eagles, and also the secondary need of help with Steven Nelson going to the Houston Texans. This is Al Kabir, the analyst. Um, let's talk Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper, the clip that you heard in the beginning, he believed that we're going to get Chris Olave and also uh, Nicobe Dean, which I'm not mad at. If we happen to go that route, I would not be mad. I would actually be very excited because you get a weapon for Jalen Hurts, who I believe needs a weapon. Also, you help that linebacking core, um, which is starting to beef up, especially if we get Nicobe Dean. And then he have us getting the edge rusher or basically another linebacker with the 51 overall pick and Drake Jackson. I believe that's his name um, out of USC. He's pretty good, but um, I think one of those picks has to be a cornerback. It have to be a cornerback because, yeah, I'm at the point draft best player available even if it's over the knee so say if it's a better linebacker than a cornerback get that linebacker but our secondary is looking really weak um really no safety besides anthony harrison anthony harris is okay i'm not too mad at that pickup and then you just got darius slay and if we happen to go that route again it's going to be 2020 season again where I love Avante Mattis now. I believe he's in the right spot he should be in. But when he played the outside, he was getting hurt and basically destroyed. He had keep up with the wide receiver, but he was just so much smaller. It was hard for him to break up passes and things like that, which caused injury. Then we got this guy, this guy. Now we bring somebody up from the practice squad. Now, say if we don't. Now, say if we just decide, you know what, we're not going to draft a quarterback or we're going to get a quarterback like in a fifth round developmental piece. I don't see us going into the season just like last season when we got Steven Nelson. I don't see us going into the season with that cornerback core like Xavier Rose still out there. There's still still a few guys out there. Um, Stefan Gilmore is still out there. Um, yeah, but it's just guys out there that we can get, even if we decide not to get a rookie guy. And I don't, I don't know why I want to talk about this a bit. I don't get why Steven Nelson is taking so much flack. He played every game last season. He hits. He was serviceable. He was a cornerback, too. I mean, a lot of people was comparing him to Darius Slay, but... We all know Steven Nelson is not a Darius Slay. 
he was very serviceable. That's how you've seen the best of Avante Maddis and Darius Slay because he played this role. He, he was a role player. He's not a superstar. He did what he was supposed to do. You know, people bring up the Chiefs game, but who can really keep up with Tyreek Hill? It was just certain wide receivers that was just dominant. It is what it is. But one thing for sure, I know he can hit. I know he can stick with certain receivers, but I don't know. that Him leaving hurts because, again, he was serviceable. He was a serviceable guy. Two years, five million. I mean, two years, 10 million, so 5 million per year. Not bad. Um, Texans actually got a steal out of that. So, very serviceable guy. He's going to ball with the Texans. It's, just, it's the Texans. They are develop, a developmental team. They got a young quarterback, uh, Lovey Smith coming back. We'll see what he do there. But I'm focused on my team right now. And... We we need a cornerback. We need a safety. That secondary need help. So, I, of course, our line is always going to look good, offense or defense. But when you're starting to look at that secondary, it's giving me 2020 vibes, and that's not good. But, hey, what do you think and how do you feel, man? Do you like Mel Kuyper? Mock draft of us getting Chris Olave and the Kobe Dean and a possible edge rusher basically in the second round. Or third round, I think that is. Second or third. Well, this is Alcabea Analyst. Ghost.